Hello and welcome to FA Learning. My name is Zalam and today I'm going to talk about commodity classification uh, for group A plastic. So this is the third video of storage protection requirement. So this series is basically uh, based on chapter 20 of NFA 13, 2022 edition. And for those who are new to this channel, uh, for your information, this is the third video. The first video was uh, about class one to four commodities and group A, B, and C plastic. We talk about different heat release rate of those products, how these hazards are classified. The second video was basically from group A plastic, uh, which talk about expanded and non-extended plastic and those criteria from where it comes and so on. So this video is basically going to uh, further classify group A plastic and storage protection requirement, how to select the, uh, the correct commodity classification based on various products within the warehouse. So let's get started. Okay, so today we are going to see the figure 2433A of NFA 20, uh, which is about uh, which is about the commodity classification. So the figure 2433A, it is for cartoon commodities. So something that is cartooned or stored within a, a wooden container uh, that contains mixture of group A expanded and non-extended plastic. So on the x-axis, they have said percentage by volume of group A expanded plastic. And on the y-axis, it is percentage by weight of group A non-expanded plastic. So it is expanded versus non-expanded plastic. You can say that one uh, expanded for the volume and non-expanded uh, for the weight, right? So suppose, uh, let's say class start from class third commodity. So if you summarize this in the simple word, uh, suppose this is a warehouse and you are going to consider uh, maybe you have get the inputs uh, from the, the client or the owner that we are going to keep the products that comes, uh, they give you the idea about the products, their types and all listing, and you determine that is class third commodities. So uh, based on that class third commodities, you can design your sprinkler system, you can size the pipe, water requirement, pump and supply, all those uh, play key roles, you know, based on the commodities. So class third commodities, uh, in class third commodities, you can keep around 5% by volume of group A extended plastic and the 5% by weight of group A non-extended plastic. So this is what uh, they all talk about. Now, if you go higher than 5%, though it is never class third commodities, instead that is going to be class four commodities. So if you higher than 5%, so it is, class four commodities. So in class four commodities, you can keep, uh, if anything higher than 5%, up to 15% by weight of non-extended plastic, you can consider that is class four. So five to 15% of non-expanded plastic and five to 25% of expanded plastic. So from this line to this line up to this point, you can keep five to 25% by, by volume of expanded plastic, as well at the same time, five to 15% uh, by weight of group A plastic or the mixer of both uh, you can give as well. Now let's talk about group A non-extended plastic. What is the criteria that says, so this is not class four, this is not class four commodities. Indeed, this should be the group A non-extended plastic. So let me remind you that group A non-extended plastic or group A extended plastic is the severe in the hazard release rate and the hazardous categories than those class three and four products. So anything above 15%. So if your non-expanded plastic contained by weight is greater than 15%, that is going to be group A non-extended plastic. Okay, so anything greater than 15%, you can say it is group A non-extended plastic. And 
same way anything between anything f of 25 to 40% still you can say uh, it is a group a non expanded commodity classification meaning that if it is group a non expanded plastic warehouse and the commodity classification design based on that requirement you can keep some to, uh, you can keep 25 to 40% or let's say 5 to 40% of group a expanded plastic uh, and it's still it will be considered as a group a non expanded plastic so anything higher than 40% right so suppose your warehouse contains greater than 40% by volume right by volume like uh, let's say the products that is uh, expanded polystyrene hody box and different kind of those uh, packaging item products that is the cap due to that the density of that reduced you know uh, in various process that i discussed in the last week so if anything is greater than 40% now it should be considered as group A expanded plastic, right? So this is about figure 2433A. And remember the one, this is just for the cartoon commodities. Now, next we'll be moving on to exposed commodities. Exposed commodities have some uh, different requirements in cartoon and they behave different in case of the fire. And they, they have different heat release requirement, you know, uh, the criteria. So based on this mind, keeping those mind, let's talk about the third one. Uh, the second figure, which is 2433B, and this is for exposed commodities, okay? So this is for exposed commodities. Again, we have the same on the x-axis, group A, expanded plastic by volume, and on the y-axis, group A, non-expanded plastic, I wait, right? So uh, same way you can keep in class third commodities, 5% by volume or 5% by weight of group A expanded plastic or group A non-expanded plastic. But if you see class four criteria requirement, right? Suppose this is class four, okay? They said you can keep five to 15%. Uh, this five to 15% by volume, sorry, by weight, of non-expanded plastic, okay, non-expanded plastic. But now, if it is anything greater than five percent in exposed criteria, that is not considered as class four categories. Now it should become automatically a group A non-expanded plastic. So consider if you are not keeping those products in the carton or within some container, the the fire profile or the fire uh, behavior of those products is going to be different, right? So in this case, compared to the previous, the previous figures talk about uh, in class four, you can keep five to 25%. Uh, in class four, you can keep five to 25% of group A expanded plastic, but with this, that was with the cartoon one, but with this, as for the exposed one, you can keep only about something around five to 20, uh, less than 5%, to consider as class third or class four commodities. So anything higher than 5%, all the way up to 25%, that is protected as group A non-expanded plastic, okay? And anything beyond 25%, if it is greater than 25%, uh, like from this point and all the way to this one, you have to consider that is group A expanded plastic by volume, right? So, and again, anything above 15% to 25%, uh, you can say that it is, it should be considered as group A non-expanded plastic, right? So this figure give us some idea about how to uh, classify the commodity classification, you know, based on the different products and the mixer, you know, in the warehouse, in the retail soft warehouse or those areas, uh, always remember that you are going to have uh, different kind of the products with different uh, fire profile. It is never certain that uh, what is the type of uh, commodity classification it should be, you know, and, but because there are different uh, products, so you have to group all this together and consider which of the products have the severe fire hazardous requirement on which need more water to extinguish the fire or which one has 
mass high heat release rate. So that's all factor. You know. Now, if you see these two nodes, we have class third and plus class four, which says that uh, if you are using class third commodities refer, uh, to 23 to if it is a plastic pellet, and uh, if it is class four, refer to 23 to if it is uh, plastic pellets, right? So basically, uh, this says about if you have class third commodities and that is kept on the plastic pellets, uh, you have to increase uh, class third to class four. And if it is class four, you have to go class four to group A plastic. Because those plastic pellets uh, that have different uh, fire scenarios compared to the conventional wooden pellets. And again, if those plastic pellets always quantify if it is reinforced or not. So reinforcement means you have to go two classes higher than this class four become group A plastic and class four become group A plastic. So those reinforcement requirement and unreinforced requirement plastic and wooden pellets categories, it's a matter of discussion for the next time. Uh, so we'll be covering in our coming days, but this is all for, for now. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, uh, whenever you talk about the commodity classification, it is rather, it is a subjective approach, you know, rather than a type of quantification. You have to be subjective and require experience, you know, extensive experience to qualify. And always, always try to contact, always try to get, when you are going to classify the commodities, try to contact with uh, the facility owner and look about their requirement, what they are going to store, what are the purpose of this uh, warehouse or this storage requirement, and try to get some consultation from approved consultant, uh, take input from the insurance companies who is involved in those projects, take the input from the ASA or within the local, local jurisdiction. So all those combined only going to have uh, a positive impact on your design, you know. Remember, commodity classification is always, always a uh, first stage of designing your sprinkler system, you know. So it should be very strong. And if it goes wrong, you are not going to uh, uh, design if it efficiently, you know, uh, those areas. Let's say, for example, if you consider this is a class third communities and based on that, you size the spinger system, water requirement, and so on. And later in future, you know, uh, uh, once the project completed, the owner started keeping the products that is group A expanded plastic in quantities that is higher than 25% or 40%, let it be exposed or wooden carton. So in that case, if there is a fire and the heat release rate from those products is much more higher than the heat release rate of class third or four communities, so what is going to happen? The water which is discharged from the sprinkler system, uh, that is not enough to extinguish the fire. Uh, in the other words, say you know the water never going to reach the base of the fire. So in way uh, from the ceiling uh, somewhere in the middle, uh, the heat release rate takes away all the water, convert to the steam, and those steam fade away from that. So it increases the size of the fire. And once the size of the fire increases, we all know well that. It is beyond the capability of a spinger system to protect that area because the spinger system have only some area requirement, hydraulic design areas, uh, let's say some 12 number of spinger for the warehouse, for the, like the ESFR or CMSA or CMADF. So those are all going to play a, a major impact on the single sink criteria of the fire. So that's for now. I'll see you next week. Uh, take care and bye-bye.